If you have goals that mean something to you and you are making progress towards them, you will not hate your life. The point of a job is to learn and make money to survive. If you don't know what your mission is, the most important first step is to figure out what your mission is. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference. Now, I see a lot of entrepreneurs who are not happy with their business. They're not happy with their life, and it's, it's just, it's so sad and so depressing because entrepreneurs are the ones trying to make the world better for other people. And if you are not happy with what you're doing yourself, there's no way that you can bring positivity out into the world. So today, we're gonna look at the seven reasons why you are not happy and how to fix them. Also, if you wanna know my strategies and the strategies of other successful entrepreneurs and how to build confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you a 30 second to five minute video for free delivered to your inbox to help you build unstoppable confidence. The link is in the description below. Surround yourself with greatness. If you want to be more confident, you need to surround yourself with things that make you feel confident. Realizing that any big endeavor is the collection of a lot of small steps that came before. If you're doing work that you love, you're more likely to follow through. You're more likely to do it because it doesn't feel like work because you love doing it. Let's just jump into it. Number one, you're doing what your parents want you to do. And sometimes that's a good thing, but rarely it's off track. It's very rare that the path, the exact path that you want is the exact same path that your parents want. And I can't tell you how many young entrepreneurs I meet on a daily basis who are writing to me, who are DMing me, who are messaging me, who are meeting me and saying, I wanna do this, but my parents don't support me. At some point, you need to decide whose life you're gonna live, your life or your parents' life. And having that honest conversation and telling them, this is my dream, I understand that you love me, have empathy, I understand that you love me, that you want the best for me, but this is my dream. I need to try it. I'm not trying to disrespect you. I'm not trying to disrespect the family. I need to try this for me. It may not work out. You know what? Stats show that it probably won't work out, but I need to try it because otherwise I'll live the rest of my life in regret. I need to try it. And I hope that if I fail, you'll still be there for me because I love you and I need your support through this. Approaching it from that angle is a lot easier than how most people have the discussion with their parents. And so it's on you being the bigger person. And you may say, well, I'm the younger one. I'm the, I'm the child. Why do I have to be the bigger person? Stop complaining, stop putting expectations on them. Be the bigger person, own it, eat it, grow from it. It'll allow you to do things that your parents didn't even think were possible. This is the first step in your growth. And at the end of the day, if they still don't support you, then you have a tough decision to make. At what point are you gonna say, this is my life? You know, are you gonna be 30 and still listen to your parents or 50 and still listen to your parents? At what point do you say, thank you for raising me. I, I love you, I respect you, I appreciate you. And now it's time for me to stand on my own two feet and deal with the consequences and go off and build your dream. You will not be happy living your parents' version of your life. Number two, you're hanging out with friends who don't support you. This is another big one. Most people's friends suck. Think about your friends. Think about the friends you had growing up. A lot of these people, they're just complaining. They're, they're complaining about their boss. They're complaining about their job. They're complaining about the president. They're complaining about the economy. They're just complaining and blaming other people. And that is not the path to getting out of your circumstances. That is not the path to get you where you need to go. Sometimes friends are supportive of the idea that you have, the dream that you have. A lot of times though, friends, they're not. A lot of times they're friends who say, you can't do that, come on. You didn't go to school for that. You think you can do that? Are you crazy? You're not gonna be able to do that thing. And so hanging around people who don't support you, you know, family is one thing, because you got family for life. But friends, I look at one of two things. One, dropping friends who are, who are negative, who don't support you, just, just straight out drop them. They're not supporting you. You don't want them in your life anymore. And others who might be slightly positive but still complain and blame and, you, and they can't help you get to where you need to go, it doesn't mean you have to drop them, but I'd be limiting my exposure. The more time you spend with people who are negative and, and Debbie Downers and just the, the world is against them, the more that starts to infect you and you don't want to be around it. And so you might still get together with your buddies every now and then and, and watch a game or play some basketball or, or with your girlfriends and go get a nail, nails done or whatever it is, but just limiting your exposure to negativity, to small thinking, not in a judgmental way, not like I'm thinking big and you think small and you suck. You don't need to criticize them or judge them. Just having that in your environment pulls you down. And so limiting your exposure to that or cutting it from your life is the path to leave space for other things that it will allow you to move forward. 
Number three is you're chasing money, not a mission. A lot of entrepreneurs, when they get started, they're chasing money. You're chasing money. You look at the, a magazine of the top 50 hottest startups to do in 2018, you think that's the one you're gonna do, and you end up losing. Like the people who win are the ones who are, who are mission driven. Money is important. It's absolutely important. It's just not number one. There's something above money. And the people who are purpose driven, the people who feel like they are here to do something powerful and meaningful, are the happiest people. People feel like they're on a purpose and they have that awareness to know what their mission is. They are the happiest people. And the ones who don't have a purpose, the ones who are doing something just for money, they end up doing work that they hate. You end up doing work that you don't like just because you're trying to make money. And if you're in survival mode, I get it. You know, you gotta do what you do to survive, but try to pick at least a job. If you're gonna have a job, pick a job that is helping you learn the skills so you can go and launch your mission. It's the people who take a job in something totally different from what they actually wanna do. You're not learning anything over here. The point of a job is to learn and make money to survive. And the more money you make down this path, the harder it is to jump off and go do the thing that you wanna do. So you get trapped in this cycle and it's a cage you created for yourself. So you've gotta do that thing. If you're gonna have a job, make sure it's in the industry that you wanna be in and have a mission. If you don't know what your mission is, the most important first step is to figure out what your mission is. You will never be happy unless you figure out what your mission and your purpose is. So many people just drown themselves out. They drown out the noise and they sit down on the couch and they watch Netflix all day because they don't wanna do the work of figuring out what their purpose is. If you don't know what your mission is, it needs to be your immediate priority and then start planning for that to happen. Whether it's part-time now because you have a job, taking a job in your industry, learning more, and slowly, slowly, slowly making your way to do your mission on a full-time basis is the path to achieving happiness. Number four is you're not serving people enough. I believe that people are built to serve. I think there's some people who love serving just the five closest people to them, their friends, their family, like immediate friends, closest family, so maybe the five to 50 people in your, in your inner circle, in your inner network, those are the people that you wanna help. And others are built to serve the world. Others are built to have like a big purpose, a big mission, not just the closest people to us. But if you are not happy right now, chances are you are not serving others enough. And so I'd be looking at one, identifying what is the thing that you love doing? Who do you want to help? I like the world. I like mass. I want to help a billion people, right? It's not so much the one of ones that I love as much. I want to help the world. Where are the people, like Nina, my wife, loves helping individuals. She likes the one-on-one. -on -one. She doesn't want to go out and have a, a huge impact, but she cares deeply about the people who are connected to her. She stays in touch with people who she knew in grade one <laughs> and still in touch with them and still finding ways to care and help and love them. So whether you're doing on a big massive scale or just helping people in your closest circle, don't judge, just figure out the one that's best for you. But if you're not happy, it's because you're not serving those people enough. You're not having a big enough impact on those closest people or the bigger mission. The number five reason why you are not happy is you're not building self-respect. A lot of people are not happy with themselves because they don't love themselves. They don't have respect for themselves. So how do you build self-respect? Self-respect, I believe, comes from setting goals for yourself, setting challenges for yourself, doing something that will help you progress, and then going off and accomplishing it. Where I think so many people are doing the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out, rinse and repeat, copy and paste, the same day, over and over and over and over again. There is no progress. There is no chance of progress. And so you lose respect for yourself and you become unhappy. Where if you challenge yourself, if you create a goal for yourself, you say you're gonna do something, and then you attempt to do it, whether you actually, this is what's interesting, whether you actually accomplish it or not, just the process of trying builds your self-respect. So whether you say, uh, as an example, I'm gonna film a YouTube video every week for the next year, that's my goal. You better make sure you do it. Now, it doesn't matter the results of that video, it's just did you do the work or not? Did you actually make the video and put it up? It's easy when it's easy. If you have all week to do it and there's no you know, pressure for you and you can bang it out and it's a super easy thing to do, then it won't actually build your self-respect. But if it's hard, and it's challenging, and you get up and you do it, then you start building that credibility with yourself. Then you say, I did it, it was hard, but I still did it. I'm the kind of person who does difficult things. I'm the kind of person who sees things through. Now you're starting to build self-respect up. So I like to use the example of racing against three-year-olds. If you're running a race against a three-year-old, you're gonna win, it's easy. It's, it's, not a, it's nowhere near a contest. If you win that race, you could, you could win it crawling. You know, if you win that race, it doesn't make you feel great because the bar was set so incredibly low. 
But if you ran a race against people who were even better than you, even if you lost, even if you knew you're going to lose going in, because you're going against people who are faster than you, just the fact that you lined up and you said yes and you tried your best will be building of your self-respect. You will feel better about yourself for having tried that scary thing. Even though you lost and you beat them, you won the race against three-year-olds and you lose the race against the athletes, you will feel better about yourself for racing against the athletes. And so that's the point. When you set a goal for yourself, it has to be something that's at the edge of your comfort zone. And whether you get a positive result or not, it's just about actually doing the work. It's actually about following through like you said you would follow through to build up your self-respect. And when you respect yourself, you're gonna feel happier too. Reason number six why you're not happy is you don't have inspiring goals. So many people who don't know what they want in their life and they have no goals to shoot towards. It's really sad, it's really depressing, kind of like the mission. A lot of people have no idea what kind of goals they have for themselves. And so as a result, you just wake up when you keep going back to that job that you hate, you keep hanging around with these friends who bring you down, you keep going home and binging on Netflix and Oreo ice cream. Oh my God, Oreo ice cream, I haven't had that in a long time. I love Oreo ice cream. You keep binging on your Oreo ice cream, and that's just a rinse and repeat every single day in and day out. Where when you start to set goals for yourself, powerful goals, inspiring goals, and you start making some progress on it, it doesn't even have to be that big a goal yet. It just has to be closer to the edge of your comfort zone. Something that is pushing you a little bit to step outside what you normally do. When people are inspired, when people have a goal that means something to them, they start working towards it. And as they start making progress on it, you start feeling happier. When you set a challenge for yourself, like I want this goal to happen, and then you do it, and you make progress towards it, you start feeling better, you start feeling happier, people start looking at you differently, you start standing up straighter, you start walking around with a smile on your face. You don't have to be like goofy, crazy smile all day long, but you won't hate your life. If you have goals that mean something to you and you are making progress towards them, you will not hate your life. And so set some meaningful and powerful goals for yourself. And the number seven reason why you are not happy and how to fix it is you don't believe in yourself. You could have the biggest mission in the world, you can have the best goals in the world, you can have a lot of things lined up for yourself, but if you don't believe that you can go off and do that crazy thing, if you don't believe that you can do that little thing, then you won't. As long as you have all these doubts and insecurities and lack of self-confidence, then you won't go off and do that thing. The best way that I know how to get out of that funk is what I've built with the 254 series. It's how I've done it myself. I've built belief in myself by consuming the videos on my content. The more I hang around Elon Musk and Oprah Winfrey and these successful people, the more bleeds into me and feeds my self-belief to go off and do the things that I want to do. And so the 254 Confidence Series that I talked about at the beginning is really about every day getting the video for free in the morning that helps you build your confidence. And it's 30 seconds to five minutes just meant to be a trigger for you. That here I'm hanging out with Oprah and here I'm hanging out with Elon and here I'm hanging out with Richard Branson and Steve Jobs and they're giving me just a quick little hit. And the more you're around that, the more it's gonna feed in to your environment, the more it's gonna feed into your mindset to say, I'm confident, I'm, I'm around, I'm like these people, I belong here. And it's gonna give you that self-belief to go off and do the things that you wanna do. So those are my seven reasons why you're not happy and how to fix them. I would love to know which ones resonated the most with you. Did I miss an eight, nine, 10 that you wanna to add to the list? Let me know down in the thoughts below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is, much love. I'll see you soon. Altruistic, world domination, honey empire, right? I'm grateful. I understand why I'm here. I think because I am so open. I want you to think and see. It's a bloody brief life. All of you have the potential for enormous success. If you want to know what Gary V, DJ Khaled, Oprah, and others know about empire building that most people miss, check out the link in the description for a free bonus video.